In this video, we consider utility system software. So utility system software is a subcategory of system software and often sits alongside your operating system. Lots of operating systems come with utility software pre-installed, but you can also buy them from dedicated vendors. Depending what definition you look at and where you read it, some people argue different types of software aren't utility software and some are. But in essence, it is designed to keep your computer safe and keep it running efficiently. It provides you with useful tools for management of files and applications. In essence, you can kind of think of utility software a bit like an MOT or service for a car. The car itself is the operating system, but unless you maintain it regularly and look after it, it eventually starts to break and slow down. A similar thing can be said of a computer. Yes, the operating system will allow you to run the computer, but without utility software to protect your computer with firewalls and antivirus, to clean it up, create backups and run defragmentation, your computer can start to lose performance. On the screen now is a list of typical utility software which you could be expected to know about and be asked about in the exam. Now there are many more utility programs but this is a fairly broad list that covers most of the common ones. Now in the rest of this video we're going to talk about the five that are highlighted on the screen now. Device drivers and file management, it's a bit more important to know a little bit more about those and we actually discuss those in more detail in other videos. So let's talk about file repair utility software. So as you may be aware, files can become corrupt or damaged for any number of reasons. File repair software, as the name suggests, attempts to correct these issues and restore the file to its original or previous working state. A file repair facility is often built into certain applications, as well as typically being a separate, dedicated utility tool found in most operating systems or from independent vendors. The next category is backup software. So much critical data is now stored in a digital format that making sure your important files are backed up are essential. It's not just important information such as banking documents or accounting information, but also personal information. More and more people store all their memories and forms of photos in a digital format only. Backups can be set to be automatic, based on a certain schedule at a given time every week, or indeed performed manually. There are many types of backups you can perform. You can perform a full backup, which literally takes everything from a certain drive or selection of folders and takes a copy of them all in their current state and puts them into a different media in a different location. Or we could do incremental backups that scans to look what has changed since your last backup and only copies and backs up the items that have changed. This can often be quicker after performing a first initial full backup. You can back up to different media Offline media like DVDs or Blu-rays, external hard disks, or indeed backing up to an off-site cloud location. And again, backup software often comes pre-installed with an operating system, but can also be purchased separately. Compression utilities reduce the size of a file, so it takes up less disk space and is quicker to download over the internet. Compressed files must be extracted before they can be read. So typically we might consider a video on YouTube like the one you're watching now. It needs to be compressed because you want to watch that video in real time. You need it to be streamed and there would just be too much data, especially if the video was high quality. Now, depending on the algorithm used, data is either lost during this compression, which reduces the quality of an image or sound, for example, JPEG, or the data is represented in a different way using binary, retaining the original data in a new compressed format, for example, with a zip file. If we look at a very simplistic idea of how this might work, you can see in this illustration, 
we've got eight ones, we've got eight zeros, we've got eight ones, and finally we've got eight zeros. Now we don't actually need to store every single bit. Instead, what we could store is the number of ones and the number of zeros. So here we've got eight ones followed by eight zeros, followed by eight ones, followed by eight zeros. As long as we know that we started with ones and then we changed every time the bit state changed, then it's very easy to uncompress this data back into its original format. The first number eight means we need eight ones. The second number eight means that's followed by eight zeros and so on and so forth. It is very easy to reverse this process. As a result, we've stored significantly less data. In the case of this simple example, we've actually halved the number of data we're storing. Defragmentation utilities reorganize files on a hard disk. It puts the fragments of files back together and collects free space. This reduces the movement of the read-write head across the surface of disks, and this speeds up access to files. Solid-state drives should not be defragmented. It's unnecessary because they've got no moving parts and they can access files very quickly already. It actually reduces their lifespan due to the way those devices actually work. Defragmentation typically includes taking all the fragments of a file, which you can see in this illustration. It takes them and puts them into a single file towards the end of a disk, reorganizing those fragments and putting them back together again. Once it's done, it's able to free up sufficient space at the start of the disk and then move the files back to the front. The result is that all the files are continuous, one after the other, starting at the beginning of the disk, and all the free space is collected towards the end. The final category is anti-malware utility software. So anti-malware software helps keep your computer and files safe from the many varieties and flavors and types of malware. This include viruses, trojans, worms, spyware, and lots, lots more. Virtually all operating systems these days come with malware protection. It's already built in, configured, and typically turned on by default. As with many other forms of utility software, there's also plenty of companies who specialize in producing their own dedicated anti-malware programs. So having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How do utilities help to keep your computers safe and in working order?